Hey, Courtney, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Tam, how are you? Listen, I am good. I'm just happy that you're here with me. I'm super excited and honored that you joined me. <laughs> it's really a pleasure to be in your presence. Oh, wow. Oh, you just have such a beautiful spirit and I love everything that you're doing. And as a black woman, I just want to say thank you. You're welcome, sis. Thank you. <laughs> so, guys, if you don't know, Courtney has been rocking really hard for us, not just on social media, because a lot of times people just rock for us on social media, but behind the scenes advocating for us in, at Paper Magazine, do it for the brand, and so much more. So we're going to go in today to find out a little bit more about Courtney and why it means so much to her that not just women, not just black people, but especially black women have such a loud voice in the world today. So Courtney, tell us a little bit about you and what got you started in this industry. Oh, okay. So I'm originally from Cali. So I am a Cali girl at heart. <laughs> um, I grew up in the Bay Area, which is a very um, progressive um, and evolutionary, revolutionary um, area. So I kind of grew up around that. Um, but I've been in New York City for over 10 years now um, within the creative industry. So within creative marketing, PR, um, and with everything I do, I want to have an impact, right? So um, I moved right after grad school, Howard University, HU, you know. Um, I moved to New York City, and I um, got a gig at AMC Networks, which owns, you know, AMC, Mad Men, Breaking Bad, like all those cool shows, Walking Dead, uh, Wii TV, um, you name it. So uh, that's sort of where I started to get my feet wet um, here in New York City. And then from there, I just gradually progressed throughout my career. So I've worked um, at boutique agencies, um, working on million dollar accounts to actually big box brands like Lush Cosmetics and the Vanity Box, which is a very well known um, hair care uh, line, with, especially within the black community. I was the director of marketing there. Um, and then I started my own agency, Do It For The Brand, um, where we would represent uh, women of color. In, uh, specifically, um, as well as brands um, of color. Um, so we did that for three years, and I noticed that um, we really had a voice, and we really had a brand, and so we've evolved, actually, into more of a social collective because we want to reach more people. We want to impact more people. So right now we're working on merch and events and different activations um, specifically for women of color, specifically for black women. Um, and I've been at Paper Magazine uh, now for over a year, um, actually. And um, it's been really great because I've been able to sort of take my mythology of life um, and what I represent and, you know, the impact that I've had so far across the projects that I've done at Paper Magazine. So at Paper, I'm the senior creative strategist. So there I lead um, various projects across um, editorial, across the agency, you name it. So I've done everything working with Nike to Lean Away, um, to BET, um, to Black Girls Code, um, and sort of everything in between. And so my role there is to um, kind of allow brands to see themselves through the paper lens. Um, but I like to put my little spin on it, you know, season a little flavor on it, um, to sort of be a voice for the voiceless, perhaps for people who aren't um, always seen or heard. Um, so I try to always integrate that um, in the different campaigns and different projects that I work on. So guys, this was the interview because, you know, I don't know what else to ask after this. <laughs> so did I get the job? <laughs> and you, you, you can take my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Uh, for the Do It For The Brand, why, mm -hmm. like, what went into you naming it Do It For The Brand? What was the idea behind the name? So I get that question a lot. Um, it's a little play on Do It For The Gram. Um, but also really at the core of Do It For The Brand is that um, we are very passionate about the people and the brands that we work with and that we represent. Mm -hmm. um, and we go hard, you know, so we want to do everything above and beyond. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's really the philosophy um, behind Do It For The Brand and the name. Gotcha. So what is your favorite campaign you've ever worked on? Oh, that is such a hard question. Oh my God. Um, wow. 
All right, so make sure nobody comes through you. We're going to say top five, but just one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love you the disclaimer. Always, you know, you were in the four, but she did ask for one. Protect <laughs> <laughs> your neck. Um, okay. Um, I would have to say, wow. Um, it's neck and neck, but I definitely think the Nike campaign that I did um, – this past holiday season, um, the All for One campaign, um, which basically highlighted different change makers um, within local communities. So um, partnering with Black Girls Code and this amazing organization called Kicks for the City based out of Chicago, which helps to collect footwear um, for the homeless and for communities in need. Um, so working with that from soup to nuts was absolutely phenomenal for me. Um, you know, I kind of was working with a shoestring budget. Um, it wasn't a multi-million dollar campaign, but it looks like a multi-million dollar campaign, which I'm extremely proud of. Um, but also for me, I think allowing um, Black Rose Code and Kicks for the City to have this platform and to be um, sort of shown in this light um, in a way that perhaps maybe your typical Nike campaign wouldn't have gone towards, if you will, during the holiday, especially. Um, so that campaign really has a special place in my heart. Um, but then also right there is probably working with Lena Waith um, on the paper digital covers that we did um, for Black History Month. Oh, nice. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So I know that you work with like a lot of um, high-end quote-unquote companies. What has been your... We all have it at some point. Have you ever had so far, what has been your fangirl moment? Like when you finally met this person or maybe a CEO, you were like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you may not have even acted out physically, but in your heart, you were like, yes. <laughs> wow, that is quite a question because I've met a lot of people uh, within the industry. Um, I've been blessed Hmm. I'm a really big music person. Okay. Um, music is sort of everything to me. I grew up as a dancer. Um, so I would probably have to say really any musician I've met. So Mary J. Blige, actually, I, I grew up listening to her um, in my household. You know, Sunday mornings, mom would pop in that, you know, album, that My Life album or that What's the 411 album. Um, and you knew it was time to get your butt up and clean, start cleaning the house. Um, so I definitely would have to say Mary J. Blige, hands down. Okay. You know what? I can see that. I can rock with that. And I'll probably have one of those moments with her, too. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to speak it into existence, yes. You know what, yes, speak it. Auntie Mary, <laughs> let's summon Auntie Mary. <laughs> How have you been keeping it together and coping during this time? It's just been a lot and has, as some people have put it, it's like playing these different dimensions in a game with 2020 so far. And it's like, level up, level up, next level. Mm -hmm. How have you kept yourself grounded, focused, and still working? Because even before you came to this interview, you were busy, yes. but still advocating the same changes and not changing trajectory just cause. Mm -hmm. So for me, balance is important and I'm actually learning to um, really embrace balance and what that means for me and really sort of take the time for me um, because I'm the type of person who will overextend myself. Um, and I think a lot of women, especially black women, um, we're sort of, I don't want to say trained, but it's a little bit ingrained within us to kind of go, go, go and put others before ourselves. Um, so for me, really taking that time. So whether it means like, you know, I've started reading actually in the morning for 30 minutes. So I set aside 30 minutes um, to read a book um, so that I can, and a physical, physical book, not an ebook, not, you know, uh, uh, being on the internet or website, but an actual book. Um, that's my time for me. And I think for me, it kind of helps me sort of set my intentions for the day. Um, and I feel like I can kind of check something off um, my list of things to do for Courtney. Um, so for me, I've actually, it's kind of funny um, with everything that's been going on with, you know, we're actually, Black people are actually facing two pandemics, not just COVID, but also um, what's going on with police brutality, police brutality, excuse me, um, health issues, anything concerning Black people and Black lives, um, that is a pandemic within itself. So we are facing two different pandemics. So the weight is much heavier, um, I think. But I'm also finding that 
Instagram and social media is sort of a therapy for me in a way, you know, I'm speaking to people online and staying connected, um, especially because we are so uh, separated. We're all kind of on lockdown, especially if you're in New York City. Um, so for me, like really having sort of that support system and having my friends, my girlfriends um, on Instagram kind of hold me down, um, especially if I am feeling like tired, exhausted, you know, um, it's sort of like life after life after life, you know, every day something new is happening. Um, so I really rely um, on my fan base, on my followers, on my friends um, through social media to kind of keep me zen. Okay. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> and I also love listening to music too. So my playlists are barely really eclectic. Um, so I love a playlist and a candle. Always says be right. Okay. On that note, what is okay? So if I was supposed to get into Courtney's playlist, tell me some maybe like the top five songs. Uh, I know you have like it's why because it's like me. I don't have a favorite artist. I have moods. So um, what would be like a typical day like to start if you had to have music to kind of like energize your day, get you going? What would your playlist sound like? So it depends on the day. Um, Fridays are usually like um, really upbeat. Um, playlist because it's Friday and the weekend's here. Um, so that could be anything from, you know, Mary J. Blige, Family Affair, um, to um, Frankie Beverly and Mays, um, to uh, Sade, to um, Kendrick Lamar. I really, really love him. I think he's amazing. Um, but if I'm feeling sort of, I need to lay back and chill, Solange is my girl. Um, Snow Allegra is also an amazing artist. Um, Victoria Monet is an amazing artist as well. Um, so, I, I mean, girl, like, if we need to exchange playlists, I got you. Um, I actually used to DJ back in the day in college. So, like I said, music is like everything to me. Um, so yeah, and it like depends on the mood, depends on the day, but I usually have a soundtrack um, to sort of match the day and match my mood. Gotcha. So, so far, the new things that I've learned is that you're a dancer and you're a DJ. All super cool things, especially being in the industry. If you had to choose one of those things to give up, which one would it be? Mm. You have these hard-hitting questions. We need to call CNN or MSNBC to hire you because, um, whoo, wow. Okay, so let me explain why I like both of them, and then I'll be able to choose. Okay, um, yeah. So I think DJing, I love to see people have a good time. Um, I love to see people sort of let their hair down, you know, have no worries, no cares, even if it's just for an hour, two hours, um, and sort of like escape from whatever their reality uh, may be. As far as dancing, dancing is, for me is like a release. So just like those people are sort of dancing to the music and they're being released, um, dancing and doing choreography for me is like my release um so you know how they say put your mask on before helping others i probably would have to give up djing so that i can stick with dancing to preserve myself and preserve my spirit i love that oh, <laughs> now i feel bad for making you choose <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, what type of dancing, like ballet, um, contemporary? Oh, nice. I wish I had done ballet when I was younger, but. Yeah, so I have some ballet, um, jazz, um, modern, um, hip hop, Afro Haitian, um, sort of a little mix. Um, I think my favorite types of dance to be um, jazz. So I love jazz music and I love dancing to jazz. Okay, I love that. I'm now getting into jazz, like probably like two years ago, um, because I'm from the Caribbean, so we're still good dance all reggae. So I'm mm -hmm. now getting into, because at first I was like, why would I like jazz? And I started listening to it, and now I like it. So it's, it's great, because there's like different types, so yeah. there's different tempos. So whatever you're feeling, like there's a type of jazz to match that. Okay. What has been a quote that has kept you motivated throughout your career? Not just this time, but something that you could lean on to remind you of why you're doing what you're doing and keep going. There are a lot of affirmations, a lot of mantras that I lean on. Um, I think one that 
really means a lot to me is that um, it's sort of how you spend your time, like should have intention, right? So whatever time you spend, whatever energy you put out, it should always have some intention for you. So because life is short, um, it's very easy to waste your energy on negativity on um, people who do not matter, who do not, do not care or do not add value um, to your life. So I think for me, um, I would definitely say the mantra would be um, that time um, has intention and you should spend it wisely. I love that. I'm going to take that one as time has intention. Spend it wisely. I've heard that one before, but I like it. Okay, so now, you see, now you've given me notes to add to my portfolio. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, you have worked with a lot of clients and a lot of people, mm-hmm. but who is, if you had to choose like a dream client, a dream project to work on, maybe you haven't worked on it, maybe you have, who would it be and what would it be? Um, I would love to work with Naomi Campbell. Um, I think she's so strong and so rooted in who she is. Um, to me, she's sort of the embodiment of confidence. Uh, and she's been in the industry and she's a timeless person. Not only is she a person, an individual, but she's a brand. You know, I say Naomi, even just her first name, you know who I'm talking about. Um, so I definitely think I would love to work with Naomi. Again, we're going to speak that into existence. We're going to call down uh auntie naomi (laughs) to manifest um her way into my um career and what i'm doing Uh, but i would love to work with naomi campbell in some capacity miss campbell do you hear courtney would like to work with you she (laughs) is an amazing person an amazing creator and we're calling you forth (laughs) yes summon her (laughs) let's vote her (laughs) vote to the front Calling Naomi Campbell to the front. Yes. Uh, what is your end goal? What do you hope to achieve in the long run and the legacy that you hope to leave for? And I say for do it for the brand because that is your baby. Um, even though you work for a paper magazine, do it for your brand is your child. And what is the legacy that you hope to leave with the company, for yourself, and, you know, just for you? For me, um, My biggest thing is creative direction. I absolutely thrive um, being a creative director. And so the goal, the end goal would definitely be to allow my visions to come to life and to change people's lives at the same time, right? So although I've done these amazing campaigns and these different projects, I think for me at the end of the day, I want to walk away and say, wow, I've been able to uplift. I've been able to uh, empower our people. Um, I've been able to empower my sisters um, through positive imagery. I've been able to sort of be a griot, if you will, and be that storyteller for them. Um, so that would be my number one thing. So that could that could be that could live through a number of different things, right? So that could mean that do it for the brand um, becomes this huge. Uh, let's say fashion brand, for instance, and um, we're able to sort of tell stories through clothing. Okay, so be it. Um, It could be a makeup line, you know, that inspires confidence within uh, women of color for black women. Um, But at the end of the day, I want it to change my community. I want it to be a voice for um, my sisters and for my colleagues, for my peers and for my friends. I love that. What is the hardest thing that you would say about being a content creator in this era? And I ask that because each era in our lives is different. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is the hardest thing about being a content creator right now? I think the hardest thing, at least for me, is having the majority um, understand 
the messaging or pitches that you're trying to get through. So meaning that um, there's a lot of teaching, there's a lot of handholding sometimes, um, a lot of education that goes behind um, specific ideas. Um, and so not everyone um, is privy to or understands um, a certain set of people or group. Uh, so really kind of, kind, kind of having to navigate that um, is exhausting, <laughs> but because it is my purpose, um, I'll do it, you know, as long as I need to until I die. Um, but that is a, a day to day difficulty um, that, you know, one could face, especially me being a creative director, um, has to deal with on the daily. Gotcha. Oh, I love that. I'm learning so much. <laughs> so I'm going to play this game I call 5-8. Uh, so I ask you eight questions. You have five seconds to ha answer each. Okay. I don't know what Is it multiple is. choice or is it fill in the blank? Fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell me there was going to be a pop quiz. <laughs> Let's go. <I'm> ready. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's go. One. What do you do for fun? Um, let's see. I dance. I play music. Um, I try to paint if I can. Um, <laughs> I hang out with my dog. Um, my dog, Hakeem. Um, yeah. <laughs> favorite food? Ooh, favorite food. That is, oh, my God. I love Caribbean. I love Italian. Uh, Mexican. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> boule, boule. <laughs> <laughs> great okay what is your favorite drink are we talking drink or drink drink <laughs> with an eye <laughs> my favorite drink uh, <laughs> anything that is either um a sweet tea iced tea or lemonade or combined got you dream vacation spot um, haven't been yet, but Greece, I would imagine, would be my dream vacation spot. Nice. Okay. Favorite color? Gold. Oh, I've never heard somebody tell me that before. Why? It looks great on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it represents royalty, too, so. <laughs> Got you. Do you prefer sweet, salty, or cheesy foods? Come on, I'm a foodie. I'm a tourist, so we love food. Um, I'm like Candy from Housewives of Atlanta. She always has a food, you know, some sort of food in her right hand. <laughs> oh my goodness! Can I combine all of yes. them? Let's go Is ahead. Cheesy, like salty too. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna rock with that. I totally understand. It is hard for you to choose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you sneakers or pumps? Hmm. I've actually gotten more into sneakers. Um, I did grow up around brothers, so I kind of get sneaker culture, but I've always been a girly girl. But I guess since COVID and lockdown, um, sort of being in sweatpants to sneakers have sort of been my go-to. So I have an appreciation, more of appreciation for sneakers. Gotcha. The one makeup that you can't do without? The one makeup I cannot live without would definitely have to be a lipstick. Oh, interesting. Cool. Mm -hmm. And for the last one, what is your pet peeve? <laughs> Ignorance. <laughs> um, I, 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 ignorance. Um, I think we're seeing a lot more of that. Um, and I just don't have the time for it. But um, yeah, I definitely think ignorance is a pet peeve. It's a huge pet peeve, um, but it's a pet peeve nonetheless. Fair enough. I actually really like that answer. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a really good one. Okay. <laughs> I'm all for it. Uh, before we go, Courtney, is there anything you'd like to share with our audience to either um, inspire them, tell them, uplift them? Because right now I think it's more important than ever that as African-American women, as black women, that we do things to inspire each other, uplift each other, build each other up. And hearing it from somebody like you is always amazing, you know? So is there anything you'd like to share, leave, or tell us? Yeah, I definitely think um, 
we're kind of all we got at the end of the day, um, no matter where we're from, you know, whether you're a Black American, you're African, Caribbean, um, Spanish, you name it. Um, I think it's important that we really, truly, truly embrace sisterhood. Um, and it doesn't mean that, you know, reaching out to someone because you need something from them, but really, again, having that intention um, and making sure we're okay, because right now the world is not okay. Um, and so making sure we preserve each other's well-being in our minds and our bodies and making sure that, you know, each of us is taking care of one another is important. So checking in and being there for one another, I think is very important. Gotcha. Being genuine because we need that. Mm -hmm. uh, I had so much fun talking with you. I hope we can do this again soon. <laughs> yes, please. This was so much fun. Like you really made my day. Thank you so much. Um, and I really appreciate, you know, your platform and everything that you're doing. Like I see you, sis. Like keep rocking, keep pushing, you know, keep moving us forward. We need you. Well, and we need you too it's people like you that keep me going so I appreciate you more than you know I remember when I met you the first time you were so, oh you were so sweet to me and you didn't know me and I think that's one of the things that kind of got me because you didn't know me, but your spirit and your kindness really, because it's not something that you see often. A lot of times we're told that women are competitive, that we don't support each other, and it's even worse within, you know, the Black community. So going to somewhere and seeing Black women kind of like, you go, girl, you speak yeah. up. I'm like, so they've been lying to us all this time. <laughs> so I appreciate you so much. <laughs> Same to you. Keep rocking, keep vibing, and yes, I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you, Courtney. Love you so much. Bye, sis. Be well. You too, bye.